Hello! Today's screencast is all about addressing Marius points. These three, one, two, three, given Marius points are direct quotes from students. Um, these all are concerning the tensile test and finding certain values, so different calculations for the test, such as finding E or percent elongation or percent reduction of area. So in order to best address this, I am going to take a normal stress strain curve and find all the values that you want to know, such as tensile strength, percent elongation, elastic modulus, etc. So if there is a particular problem that you are having, click the annotations below to address your particular problem. If you have trouble with the whole thing, just watch the whole video. So let's get down to business. Here we have our typical stress strain curve. We have stress on the y axis and strain on the x axis. Now, stress on this particular curve is given in megapascals, and strain doesn't have a unit because it's just a decimal. It's, it's you know, a length divided by a length, so it has no units. So our goals are to find these items over here. So let's begin. I like to do the easy ones first. So I think the easiest ones to do are tensile strength and breaking strength. So the tensile strength is the t highest most point on the stress strain curve. So we go over to our curve. Uh, we find it over here and it is the y value or the stress value at this point in the curve and it, again it's kind of sometimes it's hard to tell exactly where but a rough this is kind of a rough estimation so there we go so we go over to the y-axis that say that's about 490 so that'd be four nine zero mega pascals for our tensiles strength our breaking strength is the strength at when the material breaks, which would be right here for this X. So all we do is we go from the curve, right at this point, to the Y axis to figure out our breaking strength. So all the way over to the Y axis, try to make it straight as possible. Sometimes I know it's hard. Try to make it straight as possible. There we go. Okay. Uh, that's, I'd call that about 250. So that's about 250 mega pascals. So remember, tensile strength is the topmost point of the curve, the y value at the topmost point of the curve. The breaking strength is the y value where the material breaks. Our next calculation is going to be for the elastic modulus. Now, elastic modulus is, it is a slope. So it's the slope of the linear portion of this stress strain curve, or the elastic portion of the stress strain curve. So what we need to do is we need to pick a stress and a strain to find a slope using that point. So for this, I am going to use this point right here. I'm going to call that 350 MPA. And then I'm going to go down to my x-axis, trying to make my line as straight as possible, down to my x-axis, near them. Okay, so this looks to be about 0 0.01. So, to repeat, elastic modulus is a slope. So what we do is we do the stress divided by the strain, which in our case, because we found it, we're going to use the point 350 MPA divided by the strain that we found, which would be 0 0.01. So when we divide them to find the slope between it, it, for that point, we get 35,000 MPA for our elastic modulus. So remember, to repeat, elastic modulus is the slope of the linear part of the stress strain curve, and you pick a point, and you find the slope using that point. The next value that we're going to find is the 0.2% yield strength. Now, I think this is the hardest one to find. So first, we have to change 0.2% into a decimal in order to figure out what strain we need. So first, change this to a decimal. So 0.2% in order to change it to a decimal, we divide it by 100, which gives us point zero zero two and then that value right there would be our strain which is a strain 
or an x value on this curve. So what we need to do is we need to find this point, this x value. So it's going to be, we said this was 0 0.01, so 0 0.02 is going to be like maybe here, right over there, very close to zero. And then what we need to do from there, once we find that point, we draw a line that is parallel to the linear portion of the curve. So we draw a line that's parallel to this, so this is going to be a little bit difficult, but parallel, try to do it as best as you can. I'm no artist either, but... And then figure out where it intersects the actual curve. And again, this is also a rough estimation. It is v This is the hardest one to find because it involves the most like drawing, I think. So about here. So there we go. It's about there. And so once we do that, we go over to the y-axis. Ah, it looks to be under 450, but above 400. I would say that that's about 430. M P A. So to repeat, what we do, whatever percentage they give you, you turn it into a decimal, and then that is the, your strain value. You find that strain value on the x-axis, so right down here, we did that here, and then what you do is you draw a line that is parallel to the linear portion of the curve, and then you figure out where that line that you drew, where that line intersects the actual curve. So we found that to be about 430 megapascals in this case. The next value that we're going to find is percent elongation. Now, percent elongation right here is a measure of how much the material elongates during the stress, the tensile test. So what we do is we start at our breaking point here, we start here, and then what we do is we create a line that is parallel to the linear part of the curve, so this guy over here, we're doing that a lot. We had to do it for the 2% yield strength, and we also have to do it for this. So, again, best estimate here. Like so. Draw it down. Draw it down to the x-axis. Like that. Try to make it straight. It's hard. Okay, so then once you've got where it intersects the x-axis, you need to figure out the strain value right there. So I think this value right here, it's between 0 0.07 and 0 0.08, so I'm going to call it 0 0.075, that value. That's what I'm going to call it. So from there, you need to change this strain value into a percent, because they're asking for a percent, not a decimal. So you change this decimal into percent by multiplying by 100 times 100, which gives you, for this case, 7.5% elongation. So that's your answer, 7.5% elongation. So to repeat, to find the percent elongation, you go to the point where it breaks, you draw a line that is parallel to the linear part of the curve, parallel to it, and then you find the x value, where the line you drew intersects, then you take that x value and you turn it into a percent. So there you have it, that is percent elongation. Our final calculation today is percent reduction of area. Now for percent reduction of area, you do not use the curve at all. You actually use this information which was given to you. What this means is that a final is equal to 0.9 times a original. So to find percent reduction of area, we take the change in the area, either a final minus a original or a original minus a final, depending on which one gives us the positive value, divided by the original value. So let's put that all together. We've got a original minus a final, which would be point times times a original, so divided by a original. Now, all of these have a original in them, so we can cross them out. So that comes up, becomes a 1, and that also becomes a 1, which leaves us with 1 minus 0 0.9, which equals 0 0.1. Now, they're asking for a percent, not a decimal, so we change the 0 0.1 into a percent by multiplying by 100, which gives us 10%. So our percent reduction of area is 10%.
Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this helped you understand stress strain curves. Um, if you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section or shoot us an email. Thank you so much for watching.